Okay, well, welcome to video four. We're going to start with the summary from video three. Because we're going to be using the same ideas that we did in video three in video four. Now, in video three, we used a linear function. But in video four here, we're going to look at a quadratic function. And how we do the question is going to be the same. It will look a little bit different here because it will be quadratic. We'll still be given a domain, which is an equality, and we'll create an input-output table again. So let's start with a quadratic. That we're going to have to put on this coordinate plane the quadratic function that we'll use will have to involve a squared to make it a quadratic, a x and a number. So to make it a quadratic it needs to have these three things a squared, a number and a letter and a constant. And from the last video we also need to know what the domain is. So how far Am I going to go on my x and y axis to draw this quadratic? So let's have a domain. So x will have a greater or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 6. So this is our x. So our graph is going to go from 0 to 6. So it's just going to be within this domain here. We're going to draw the graph. Now for me, this is the fun part about being given a quadratic function. Taking it and being able to draw the graph on your coordinate plane. And to help us to do it, we're going to need to use the input-output table. And that's going to be the secret to success um, in these particular questions. And let's start with our inputs. What are we putting in to our, our function? Well, it says x is equal to or greater than 0. So it can be equal to 0 because this little part says it can be equal to. So that will be our first number and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. There are inputs. This is what we're going to put in because x is here. x is in our function. So these are the numbers that we're going to have to be putting in here. So there are inputs. Now in the middle of our input-output table, we put the rule, and the rule is what's here. This is the function. So the rule we'll say is x squared minus 6x plus 7. And we hope that by putting these numbers into the rule, we should end up with a new number. So all of these are going to go in to this rule. So let's do that. So 0, this is our input, this is our x value. So if we replace all of these x's with 0, so I'll put 0 here and 0 in here. So 6 multiplied by 0 instead of 6 multiplied by x. And if I work out this sum, I should end up with a new number. So we'll do that in a minute. Let's just put in all our numbers first, all our inputs. 1 is the next number. So everywhere you see x, we're just going to put in 1. So we put in 1 there and 1 there. 2 is our next number. So let's put in 2 everywhere we see x. And 3 is our next number. So let's put in 3. 4 is our next number. So let's put in 4. 5 is our next number, let's put in 5. 6 is our next number, let's put in 6. And now we're going to try and work out this little sum. And if we work out the sum, we'll end up with our outputs. And our outputs, we have our x values here that can go on our um, axis here. And our outputs are the y values. So to be able to plot a graph we need to have y values as well. 
So the input output table is really useful because the inputs are our x values and the outputs are our y values. And why are the outputs our y values? Well, we saw in the previous videos that f of x could also be written as y. So let's work out the outputs. 0 squared, or 0 to the power of 2, is 0. Minus 6 multiplied by 0 is 0. Plus 7 just leaves me with plus 7. And if I do the sum for all of these, I get these numbers. And feel free to check my maths there that these are correct. And now I have all the information I need to be able to plot my graph or plot my function. So to put the points onto here, onto my coordinate plane, let's create some couples. So the x value is 0 and the y value is 7. The next couple is 1 and 2, then 2 and minus 1, and so on. And with all my couples, let's plot these points. So 0 on the x-axis and 7 on the y, so let's find it here. We've got 1 on the x, which is here, and 2 on the y, and that's there. Then we've got 2 on the x and minus 1 on the y, and they meet here. Then we've got 3 on the x and minus 2 on the y, which is here. Then 4 on the x and minus 1 on the y, they meet here. 5 on the x and 2 on the y, 1, 2, they'll meet here. And then 6 on the x and 7 on the y, so they'll meet there. And then I get the fun part to actually draw in the quadratic. So using a pencil and freehand you can join these up to get the shape of our quadratic function, which looks something like that. And these can be really good fun to draw, and it's really nice to see the shape that you've created after you've done your input-output table. And you'll know from the shape if it's right or wrong. So a linear uh, function should have given us a straight line, and a quadratic will give us a nice curve like this. So I'll give you one or two little questions to practice in the next lesson, and see can you draw your own quadratic functions. And in summary... As I said at the start of the video, it's going to be identical to the summary for the last video, except for we're just going to change a few of these around. So this will be a quadratic function, which will be in the form of an x squared, an x, and a constant. Then you'll be given an inequality to know where to draw your graph from. And finally, you need to create an input-output table, and that's the secret to unlocking your graph. Because if you draw this and put in your inputs correctly, you'll get some nice couples of x's and y's that you can put onto your graph. And I hope that you enjoy plotting your quadratic functions as much as I do, and let's see how we get on the next lesson. Good luck!